If you're a hiker, a camper, or any sort of outdoor nature enthusiast, there will be certain safety drills what you will have practiced over and over. Everybody knows this. You will know and be educated on what animals to look out for, which plants to avoid. You will recognize danger before it ever happens. And if in the worst case scenario, something goes wrong, you will not only know exactly what to do, but you will have all the necessary equipment. At least this is what I had always thought. I have been outdoorsy my whole life. I would definitely consider myself an expert in all manner of nature and outdoors. I thought or assumed that I would be prepared for anything. Not in a vain way, but if I came across a cougar or a bear, I'd like to think I would know what to do in order to survive, but I wouldn't start trying to wrestle it to the ground. It's important to know your limitations. Be very aware and safe. I know the correct course of action for almost any animal encounter, except for the thing I'm about to tell you about. It had been very wet, and I almost gave up the idea of a hike that I'd planned. I always wear long tops, tucking my pants into my boots and covering myself in bug spray. Besides, mosquitoes love a good feast, so you need to be careful. And of course, they love hot, damp, humid weather, even more so after a storm. I had planned this particular hike for ages and needed to be there at a certain time to take a photo of a very specific plant which should be in bloom at the time. Against my better judgment, I went. Again, proving you shouldn't always listen to your instincts. But that day I didn't. I was about halfway through the hike and very close to where this particular plant should be when I heard a loud buzzing. I was already smothered in spray and was very liberally reapplying every half hour or so. I swear, you must have been able to smell the plants for miles around. I was aware of the buzzing, but pretty confident at the point that nothing would want to come near me. There shouldn't be any bees, wasps, or hornets around me, and most other bugs would be as intended, repelled by me. The closer I got to the spot where this plant should be, the louder the buzzing and flapping appeared. I could even feel a slight breeze. As I parted the branches, I very suddenly became aware what was making the buzzing. If you can imagine there being a giant bug, the size of a small human standing, then maybe you would have ever seen the fly. If you can imagine there was a giant bug, the size of a small adult standing there, on two legs, very reminiscent of the movie The Fly. If I had to guess, I'd say about five feet tall. It had a long, thin body with bendy legs, very similar to that of a grasshopper, but also very humanoid looking. It had long wings which were constantly moving, and the fact that it stood on two legs was terrifying. Its head kind of reminded me of an ant or a grasshopper. Very bugged out. No pun intended. It was also black and bright green. It looked more alien-like, to be honest, than it did a giant insect. It didn't quite seem to notice me, so I very, very slowly let the branches fall back in place and turn around as carefully as I could. Creeping very quiet for a minute or two, so I could be sure it hadn't heard, or even sensed me. And then, I ran with everything that I am. The most annoying thing about it now is that I had my camera in my hand to take a photo. But then, if I had taken the picture, would it have possibly noticed me and even pursued coming after me? I guess that's a question I'll never know the answer to. I worked security at a department store in Detroit. This was back before all the craziness and the riots, even before COVID. It was one of the roughest places to run a business, so my job involved checking outside as much as in, and there were always weirdos and drifters about. But 
rarely did I ever see anybody that looked like they were going to try and get inside. I had been lulled into a false sense of security. Since my job and my life revolved around the inner city, I never planned on seeing anything too outlandish, besides druggies and muggers. I mean, I never planned on showing up to work and suddenly being mauled by a lion. You expect that threats in the world will fit inside a very predictable bubble. Making my regular rounds one night, I stepped outside to do my usual, check for any prowlers or drug deals potentially going on. Well, more so prowlers. It was all clear, except for the door that opened into a narrow alley, and it was pretty narrow. There wasn't room for more than two people to walk beside each other, let alone room for a car. It was a little bit thinner than a single lane, I guess. The light of the street lamp got in just far enough to light up the feet of two people that must have been standing face to face. Then there was a soft wet sound, like they were kissing it up. They were in shadows from the knees up, and they were just a little too close to the door for comfort. I lit up my flashlight and trained it on them. I was about to tell them to move when I saw that they weren't indeed kissing. One of them was eating the face off the other, holding them firmly in place when the light got the attacker's attention. It turned to me, and I wish it hadn't. It wasn't even remotely human. It had wicked-looking mouth parts, something like mandibles. The eyes were black and large. I didn't get to steady it for but a second since I screamed and fell backwards. I don't know why it didn't turn on me. As soon as I could think straight, I got to looking stuff up. Turns out there was a so-called mantis man that had been sighted around New Jersey, but it was never reported really on much. I was reminded of the incident involving bath salts in Miami, and I considered the possibility that I somehow imagined the inhuman features of the one person since their face was smeared with blood. I'm at a dead end for rational explanations, and I'm also at my wit's end for my mental health. That was a very brief encounter, but I'm still pretty shaken up over it. If I approached a counselor, they'd probably have me committed. So who can I talk to and tell my story to? So I'll possibly pass this on to you. Maybe you can help me. Most of the stories I hear are things about Bigfoot, or ghosts, or something like that. Well, I saw something driving home one night that is even scarier than Bigfoot. Mainly because I have never liked bugs. They're disgusting. I don't think that I'm afraid as such. I will happily squish one. They just gross me out. Anyway, I'm not here to talk to you about my innate disgust of bugs. I want to tell you what I saw. I was driving home one evening. It was late in the summertime, and although beginning to get dark, not totally yet. In fact, that's one of the things I do love about summertime, is it stays bright out till at least 9 or 10 p.m. So I was totally minding my own business when I heard a thumping sound from the roof. I wasn't driving too fast, so maybe it was a bird, but I'm not sure. Whatever it was, was still up there, on my roof as I'm driving. I thought, what the hell? I picked up speed. Now I'm in two minds about what to do. Should I stop, halt the brakes and hope it flies off? What if it hurts? Or should I just carry on and ignore it, hoping it solves itself? That's when I started to hear this loud buzzing. It must have been loud, because I could hear it over the car engine. A buzzing and banging noise accompanied together. Now, I was starting to get pretty worried. It made one final bang, and then I catch a glimpse out the windshield, something flying off. This thing was humongous. It reminded me of a dragonfly, or a grasshopper, or a praying mantis. But it looked wrong. Not only was it incredible size, 
but it looked too much like a person. And instead of being green or black, or whatever color insects are, it was pale white, kind of like an albino insect, or so is what I got out of it. I floored it, never having driven home faster. When I got home, I frantically checked the top of my car, covered in all these weird scratches and this bizarre light green goop. It had a weird stench to it too. I just washed it off right away. And so far since then, I have never seen this creature or insect, whatever it could have been. Thank God. I was walking home from a very heavy night of drinking. I live in downtown Chicago. It probably wasn't a very smart thing for me to do, walking alone, intoxicated. But hey, I was at the point of being drunk that every single place I passed looked like it could have been my house. I knew that wasn't good, but I was too drunk to care. It was a very still night, and it was so late that there was barely anybody else on the sidewalk. I felt a breeze that should have raised some alarms in my head, since it appeared to have a rhythm to it. It wasn't just a steady stream or whoosh of air. It was kind of a whoomp, 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 whoomp kind of sound, rather than a solid breeze. I just happened to look up and see something that literally sobered me up any quicker than a cop pulling me up and trying to arrest me. Something with the shape of a large man with wings appeared to be hovering in the air, nearly 20 to 30 feet above my head. Being dark, I wasn't able to discern every feature, and somehow, in my intoxicated haze, the details of this thing stuck out to me clearly. I made out large red eyes, no pupils, and a dark, very weird body. I could tell it was training its gaze on me. I felt this deep fear inside the core of my body. It was danger. I felt, had I stayed there, I would have died. I ran as fast as I could, screaming. This thing keeping pace with me overhead, without a problem, I ended up running into a tree, knocking myself unconscious and nearly getting a concussion from it. I woke up and was still in front of the tree, but I was by myself and luckily didn't have any serious injuries. It began tickling into the news that the supposed Mothman had been sighted in Chicago a long way away from its usual home of the southern states. Now, I don't know much homework you do about the Mothman, but I want you to know that there have been numerous accounts and sightings of the Mothman being over the Chicago, Illinois area. I don't know if that's what I saw. I don't know if that has anything to do with what I saw, but I know I want nothing to do with what I saw that night. And just to clear things up, even though I was intoxicated, I am 100% behind what I saw. There is no backing down. I wasn't too drunk. I know for a fact that I saw this thing and I felt it. There's no way to explain looking at this thing and sobering up so quickly. It is one of the things that has terrified me to my very core. I never want to feel that again. <laughs> 